The tyranny of good intentions is alive and well in a state that we're not accustomed to seeing do this kind of stuff. What are they doing? Well, in a nutshell, they're going to be stripping individuals who have not been convicted or suspected of any crime. This is minority report kind of stuff here because they're taking a certain type of medication. And when I say certain types, I mean all kinds of types of medication that are extraordinarily common. What are the details? What does this mean? Guys, let's get into it. So what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be breaking this up into what does the law say, what does it do, and what does it mean? Because I think that's really kind of the best three different ways of getting into this. What we're talking about is happening in the state of Tennessee. Not usually a state that we see come up on this or really any other channel as being a state that's trying to pass some sort of aggressive gun control law. And I just have to start off by saying that we all have to acknowledge what Tennessee's trying to do in the Safeguard Against Homicide Side Effects Act. We're trying to address the correlation, the causation, the nexus, the whatever it is you want to call it between mental health problems and people who are sick. And we look back after an after shooter event and we say, well, that person was obviously sick, obviously deranged and boy we should have done something so to tennessee's credit i understand that they're trying to do something about this but they kind of go off the tracks a little bit and that's what we're talking about here so what does the law actually say well in a nutshell what it does and i'm going to go into some of the specifics here what it does is it basically creates a database including the name address and date of birth of any individual who has filled a prescription within the last six months for a lengthy list of different controlled substances and different different uh, prescription substances. Now, these prescription substances do all sorts of different things. It's not necessarily just a substance that you take if you are 10 out of 10, just a wackadoodle and the voices are telling you to do things. There's many different shades to this, like of course, everything else in life. This isn't just an on-off binary decision. There's a dimmer switch. So again, we're gonna be ending this on kind of the analysis of what does this all mean. And that's just a little bit of a teaser. So be sure you stay around to the end. The gist of this law, at least from some of the different kind of glib portions of it are, quote, the prescribing healthcare professional shall inform the patient that filling such a prescription will cause the patient to be barred from the purchase of a firearm for the duration of the treatment regimen for which the substance was prescribed or longer, end quote. So a couple of things. Number one, a lot of these kind of prescriptions people take for life. This isn't a two week antibiotic situation. This is not a necessarily a six month get through whatever particular life crisis or episode and then you're off. Although quite oftentimes, of course, that, that is the case. That is how it's used. But for many folks, they wind up being on it for one reason or another for much longer than that. And of course, I cannot miss the fact that that paragraph ends, I'm going to read the last sentence again, that such a prescription will cause the patient to be barred from the purchase of a firearm for the duration of the treatment, dot, 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 or longer, end quote. So what does or longer mean here? Well, the simple technical answer is that basically once a patient is done taking this, they should come off the list per the proposed bill here within 30 days. So that could be the or longer, unless the or longer means something entirely different. What that could mean, I don't know. So is the or longer kind of a guardrail to protect the, well, I stopped taking the drug on Monday, so gosh darn it, I should be able to purchase a gun on Tuesday or possess a firearm on Tuesday. Or is this something different? Is this something that could have a little bit more tentacles and kind of traction to it? Simple answer is I don't know, because keep in mind, anytime, and this is coming from a former state criminal prosecutor, criminal defense attorney, we have the laws as they are written, and then we have the laws how they are enforced. And in theory, at least particularly in the legislature's debating a bill, we tend to think that there should be all, no daylight between A and B. The law is going to be enforced exactly the way it's written, but this is the voice of experience. That is very often not the case at all. So when I see words like or longer tacked onto a bill, that kind of makes the hair stand up on the back of my neck because I've seen what those kind of dangling, dangling participles and uh, sentence fragments and all those other things that I forgot back in sixth grade grammar, uh, what all that stuff can do, unfortunately, when it comes to the interpretation as well as the enforcement perspective. So guys, for some more details about the bill, I'm going to put a copy paste and a link in the description box below. I just want to focus on some of the different conditions here and some of the different medications again before we get to that all important analysis. So broadly, we're going to be having medications that are going to be treating things ranging from depression, 
obsessive compulsive disorder, anxiety, PTSD, postpartum depression, panic attacks, anorexia, medications that treat certain menstrual cycle hormonal balance issues, nerve pain medications, insomnia medications, migraine medications, and others. Now again, these may not be always the on-label use. Some of these may be the off-label use of, again, how a prescriber has had tremendous success working with patients in the past, prescribing X to treat Y, even though it may not be how that drug is most widely known and marketed. So you have to keep in mind that just because a drug is marketed, for instance, as, well, this is this is what you take for depression, or this is at least what we start people off as taking with depression, doesn't mean that it may not have a variety, a wide range of other uses to treat very innocuous things, like some of the things I just mentioned. Here's a partial list of some of the drugs we're talking about. I'm going to blend some of the generic as well as some of the brand names here. We have Prozac, Zoloft, Sertraline, Lexapro, other benzos. We have selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, otherwise known as SSRIs. And of course, and again, I, all the details in the description box below as well as links, but I have to really talk to you about the impact of this, all right? Because again, this is kind of striking me as one of those tyranny of good intentions sort of things. We have a situation here where we're gonna be disbarring people of a constitutional amendment because they may have some sort of hormonal problem with their menstrual cycle. That's where this is going. Is this a big problem that we see out there in society or could this law have been a little bit more narrowly tailored? And there's lots of different ways it could happen. I'm not gonna bother hitting you with all that. But let's look at this. We just looked at this from an impact perspective. If I do hear the voices in my head and if I am inclined towards evil or some sort of nefarious action, do you really think I'm gonna be taking my medications at that point? Because the first thing I would do if I was bent on doing something bad is, oh, well, if I take this, I'm gonna get on a list. Well, I'm gonna stop taking it. It's, it's pretty much that simple. Is this really gonna have a good effect, a good impact at the end of the day? Well, as with all other laws, it'll probably be a little bit mixed. And when I say all other laws, there's, I do not mean all other laws. Another thing I wanna focus on is what kind of precedential value is this going to set? In other words, if we allow a legislature to strip a core constitutional right because someone's taking a medication, where else could that go? Particularly considering that, keep in mind, they didn't tie things to a certain diagnosis, which I am by no means suggesting that they should do that or have the constitutional ability to do that, but they're tying it to the types of medications that you're filling. Again, what kind of precedent is that setting? What other constitutional rights, whether Second Amendment, First Amendment, Fourth, Fifth, whatever, can now legislatures, in essence, do away with because you're filling certain prescriptions, you bought a certain book, you went to see a certain movie, you're a member of a certain church or fraternal organization, whatever the case may be. If the idea here, and again, I, I acknowledge that I understand where they're coming from, they're seeing a nexus, as we all are, between people who have sick and profound mental health issues and who do evil things. Okay, like I I get that, I get that. But I'm sure there's many other nexuses that could go in this together that we could also tread a path down First Amendment issues or you name it. So we just have to be careful. This is not the sort of thing that you just rush into. Are we going to open Pandora's box here? Do we know where this ends? Because I really hope the answer to those questions are yes. But I suspect that in the wake of a strong knee-jerk reaction to an absolute act of evil, that people just want to do something. And I get that, but we have to stop and ask, what are we doing? And again, before I close in the very last point here, please, all the YouTube things, if you enjoyed this video, if you want us to make more content like this, please consider clicking like, subscribe. Also be sure to share it around and of course subscribe so that you don't miss any of our other future content. Also comment below, what do you see coming out of laws like this? whether it's this one or as well as, well, what other laws do you think different state legislatures, maybe even the federal government may try to pass next if this one goes through? The last thing I want to close on is something I've talked about before, which is super important. We cannot judge laws or bills, proposed legislation, you name it. We must judge it on its effect. And I think at the end of the day, the effect for this bill is going to be a combination of people who need help not asking for help, people filling things at out-of-state pharmacies or even maybe out-of-country pharmacies going online, maybe to seeing uh, doctors on the internet who may not have the same sort of prescription requirements or may have ways around that. I mean, you name it. I'm sure that eventually if this bill doesn't tighten it up, other bills will, but you get my point. I think that it's going to lead to a cascading effect of unintended consequences and not the good types. Guys, I appreciate you sticking along with me this, this far. 
as always, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this one, please feel free to check out some of our other great content and we'll see you in the next one.